Is this you, Sean? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's me. How are you? Very well, man. We're not sure if you're up in Canada or are you in the States nowadays? No, I'm in Texas right now. Ah, it was a Texas number. Cool. <laughs> well, hey, this is great to talk to you. We're talking uh, with uh, Jean-Francois. Now, how do I pronounce your last name, dude? <laughs> Everybody calls me JF. It's just easier. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, lots to talk to you about. Um, first of all, let's let you set the uh, tone here. What is the most recent thing that Cataclysm has done that you you know are just thrilled about or you know pissed about? <laughs> um, well, we just the pre-show in Canada with the with Lamb of God. That was really cool. Uh, big open air festival in Montebello, so we we just I'm just back from that like a uh, couple of days ago, and then before that like almost ending our our world tour like we were in Europe for almost a month. Uh, yeah, like I, I'm really thrilled now that I have finally day some time off like uh, at home for a month. <laughs> That's what I'm thrilled about. But uh, yeah, next next thing for us is a. Uh, we're going back on the road uh, all of August and uh, September. We're going in Europe again for all the, the festivals. Great. We'll catch up uh, in that, you know, before you go. And we'll just uh, put some spots and some information on our show for you then. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, I've bumped into you uh, in the airport maybe more once, more than once. I <laughs> That's how much you guys are on the road, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> When you're on the road, um, do you tire, or do you you guys you guys are very tough, very fast, energetic group? Um, how do you guys sustain? What may, what gets you by on the road? <laughs> I mean, we we love what we do. Uh, we're very passionate about like uh, our our lifestyle and playing music, and it's it's like we're we're happy. I'm happy uh, on the road. I'm a happy camper. So I guess we all get along. or we know each other for like over 20 years now where the, all the other guys are like my brothers. I, like, I mean, I, we, we love what we do. It's, it's been like, a, it's been a fun ride. I'm completely into your music. It's extraordinary heavy. It's definitely, definitely innovative um, on the percussion side of things. However, we know that your picking hand is part of that. Do you work out with Max when you're writing? Or do you guys all cram together? Or, I mean, do you take specific notation? Uh, when I looked at your wiki, I was really impressed because I can read, you know, the drum part right there. That's the, the hyper blast beat. When you're playing that on your guitar, do you guys get together and notate? Do you just jam it out? Or how does that go for Cataclysm? I mean, for us, one thing that makes it easier, like uh, for me, locking up onto the rhythmic section with Max is uh, we use uh, the metronome so we make sure like uh, when we write music we write like to different clicks we have like tempo changes and stuff but uh, the first thing we do when we write a song is we uh, we we'll, we'll, we'll do the riffs the riffing first and the, the structure but the first thing we do is a tempo map of the whole track and I, I, I'll record all, all my guitars to that tempo map and give that to Max so Max is going to Ride his drum beat according to the the, the click, the metronome, and it makes everything easier to to lock together. And even live, we started using it live to make sure we're like hundred percent solid because we noticed that in the past we used to play way too fast live. Like you don't even realize it. Like you start you start the song and then it feels kind of harder, but then you 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 watch the playback or like like you watch a video or, or listen to the playback of the song that we just play live way too fast so we started like using the, the click for that reason too and uh, it helps everybody to lock together for me when I write like uh, I'll, I'll I'll often write music since I'm down here now like we're uh, we, uh, we're living like far away so like we work a lot by, by computer and by uh, by internet so I'll send him sessions and he's got like his, uh, his computer at home and he'll open the session and, and play some drum beats or jam some drum beats to it and we talk through Skype and he sends me back the session and that's pretty much how we work.
That is really, really amazing. Now, live clicks. I mean, you guys have phones on or in ears, or how's that going? Uh, it works. It's, it's uh, Max controls it, so he's got the sampler, the device, and the in ears. So he starts. He pretty much start up the song. So whenever he gives a click, then then we go and we uh, we follow him. It happens sometimes, like uh, once in, in a blue moon, we'll follow up the click. So he just mutes the click track, and we keep live for the rest of the song. But it's mostly usually, or uh, we're pretty good at it. Like yeah, we've been doing it for a few years now, and. It, it works. Uh, it works really good. Like we just basically, I just follow Max as usual, but he's following me. Like that is killer. I am. I'm blown away by that. I think that is absolutely stunning, killer right there. You know, I mean, you've seen uh, a long time ago in old rock and roll, you would see Keith Moon taped, duct taped headphones. You know, trying to hear the synthesizer do its little, you know, programmed thing. But playing to click live with that kind of power is uh, just, that's that's really ballsy, man. <laughs> I mean, some people believe in like the more the more rock and roll way of like just play live by feel. The only thing with cataclysm is like since we have parts that are like so fast, like it, it's, it's crazier to think that we can even like... <laughs> Sometimes we'll go live and, and we play way too fast and we we fall off uh, off track. Me and Max and it was just too crazy. We, uh, I feel we're a much better band with the with the click and the metronome and it feels more powerful and more uh, more true to the the records. Yeah, well, Max is. I think he's faster than Hyper uh, <laughs> Hyper Blast. I think he's just <laughs> he's got a lot of nerves. Like he he, he plays with nerves, but he's more. Uh, I'd say he's like a count drummer that's very uh, rock oriented. Like all his beats is like pretty much like does like a lot of four four like really standard. But it, his feel is rock because he all his favorite bands is like he's listening to uh, all the stuff from seventies eighties and he, he's like a he's an old school uh, kind of drummer. So that's that's his that's his bias that's his background. So he just uh, plays everything like a. Uh, According to his feel, and he has a lot of uh, yeah. Like we try to we try to raise the BDM a little faster for for a few parts, and then uh, we go back to slower for a even more groove parts, so it, so it gives it more power. That's great. We're talking with JS John Francois, and uh, he's talking about his drummer Max, and uh, how they coincide with each other here and that's cataclysms one of their main recipes however tell us some secrets about you know your guitar rigs and your bass guitars and stuff are you guys Marshall people are you heavy distorted or more cleaner tighter or new new materials that have been uh, you know s uh, invented since you know the day or are you guys tube amp people what's what's your spiel with your uh, rig there I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm kind of switching my rig around, like, uh, from tours to tours, but lately, to, to make things easier, because I've noticed, like, we don't have a lot of time for sound check and stuff sometimes on the road, so I've been using, like, those uh, those new uh, Line 6, like, uh, uh, Line 6, like, digital, like, uh, pod, so I'm plugging, I'm plugging that straight into the, the mixing board, and I'm not even using an amp live on the last few tours. I've just done like completely the eye. Same with stuff at the bass. We have like it makes it easy because we don't have a lot of tabs to carry around. We plug it straight into the board, and it's easier for the sound guy to get like a, a good tone fast because he, he he get a straight solid signal. He doesn't have to make sure that mic is like on, on the right spot and stuff. And, and yeah, well, that's what we've been doing the last few tours. And I've I've played with amps too, like different kind of amps. And um, I've played the uh, like I've played PV fifty one fifty Randalls uh, sure. Marshall like I'm I, I like to switch it around especially in the studio like in the studio I'm using a real amp and tab and like I'll I'll sometimes mix two different amps together to get like the 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 lower uh, tone the lower mid uh, section and then the the higher sharper section I get it from a different amp and just blend it together. Oh, that's cool, man. So your back line then, it, when you're doing that, DI, are they, is it just monitors and then you have you have more set and props behind you? Yeah, basically it's monitors. 
Like, uh, we sent everything through the miners. I, I tried to have a uh, guitar and bass uh, mostly on the side fields as loud as I can because when I get it, like, uh, too loud in front of me, sometimes I, we get feedback. So on the side, I noticed that it works better. And also the, the sound guy was telling us it makes everything cleaner for the drums because we don't have any cabs on stage. Like, all the the microphones from the drum, they're, they're very, very isolated. Yeah. There's no bleed into them, so it, it helps the drums as well. Like everything is cleaner, but it's a it's a weird mix. Like uh, when we first got used to this on the stage, we were like, it sounds kind of clean, but not powerful because everything was quiet. But at the same time, we're like, um, if it helps the band and makes everything better, and I don't kill my ears by the end of the tour, then that's a that's a good thing too. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Wow, that is some killer, killer information there. It's fun. Like, a lot of this stuff on that I like to ask on my show is heady questions, you know, questions of, you know, musicianship and uh, tech questions like that. And and on that note, um, how did you come about playing, you know, your instruments? Was guitar always your instrument or was there anything else? What's your little history of how you became a guitar player for Cataclysm? I mean, I started playing guitar uh, real young. I was, uh, and I, I've got to say, it's going to be because of Iron Maiden, because my mom took me to one of their shows in, in the late 80s, and I thought that was great. And then, then the next day, I wanted to buy a guitar, so that's that's what got me started. And Cataclysm started pretty much, and I like like any band starts in high school. We're all four guys going to high school, got together and started a band, and we wanted to play some really extreme, brutal music, and we were like anybody else, like trying to be as as extreme and brutal as we could back then. And uh, we just we we got lucky at first, got got a record deal, and then from then on, like it's, it's been going on for like twenty years now. So, but we we still have the same love and passion for music, and try to better ourselves every year, and try to try different things to make to to keep it interesting and, and alive. Really, and it seems like it's still your main uh, core group. You know, I think you've only switched drummers over time, right? Is that the story? Yeah, we got like uh, Max. Max left twice because he had some uh, some issues uh, he needed to fix in, the, in his personal life, and uh, for those two times, we had a different drummer filling in for one record. Like we had the in 1996 Nick Miller, uh, which was from a band called In Old Last, and. Uh, he came in for for one record, Temple of Knowledge, and then we had the Martin, which came in in 2004 for a Serenity and Fire record. Uh, everything else, we've been the same band, uh, except for the early, early days, uh, Mauricio, our current singer, he was playing bass back then, and we had a, a different vocalist for the two, uh, first two albums. But other, uh, other than that, like we, we've been the same. Pretty wow, much the same. that's pretty cool. Hey, I like to do this with my dying bride. I did this kind of thing. I just want you to do this with me if you would. It's going to be kind of rough because we're going to take you from each album. I won't do it on the videos. You got nine videos, too, that are freaking killer, man. Um, and the live stuff um, Northern Hyper Blast and live in uh, Deutschland. But. Let's talk about the albums. Um, w like, you can do them in, like, one sentence or one word if you want, you know, kind of a, I don't know, gameish kind of thing. But let's talk about Sorcery. What would you say? Sorcery, I mean, it's our first album. For me, uh, it's, it's still a, a great album. I see, like, for me, when I hear it, there's a lot of musical flaws and a lot of uh, mistakes that I hear now that back then, like, we... Uh, we kind of let go because we either we didn't notice or we were in the studio back in the early 90s and we everything was recorded to tape so everything was live the whole band was playing live together and we recorded this album in four days and mixed in a couple of days and that was it for our first record and but it still has like that, that chaotic brutal vibe that we're known for it's just like that i'd say it's early uh, like a baby early stages version of what we're doing now Killer, uh, very chaotic, but it still uh, has a great energy to it. I hear a lot of things where they'll say melodic and, but not completely mon melodic. You know, uh, death metal, uh, which is there is a thin, perfect line. A lot of people 
don't like categories. Um, I'm one that likes it. I think it's uh, us describing music. It's dynamics. Uh, what do you feel about... Okay, it's good if you need to explain to someone like what something sounds like. It's good to have categories. That <laughs> All right, Temple of Knowledge. What would you say about that in 1996? That's when we switch drummers. So having like like playing with a different musician always like, gives a gives a little twist to the the band, and I think uh, that 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 would be I would say our more technical records. That was the one that we did a lot of a lot more of a weird temp, tempo shifts and uh, like uh, like it's not an old like an old four four album. We we explored it. Like, <laughs> different mathematics of music on that one and I guess the, the, the drummer we had also on that record helped for that because he, he he brought in a lot of his own influence and he was a very technical drummer so it made us like a um, it made the band like uh, sounding kind of that way but we we will that's the album we were trying to push ourselves even faster like to the to really to the limit and after that, we kind of chose to go a different route and be like, okay, maybe uh, less is more sometimes, so we went a little more... Uh, <laughs> well, it's funny because... songwriting, yeah. <laughs> other writers will... They call it chaotic, but what's funny is they're, they couldn't be more wrong. You can tell that uh, you guys are, are writers, that you're, you, you, you're, you know that this is this, this part... This is this connection to the riff. This is where we are in the piece, and this is why we're switching, you know, to seven now. Now we're now we're switching to five. Now we're back to four again, um, and uh, it's it's just so interesting. But uh, people that wouldn't know music, we call that chaotic. But now, as we get into victims of the fallen world, it says what you just said. I guess you started to go into. More of a songwriting format. Uh, describe. Yeah, we uh, we came up. That's 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 a record where our the current lineup we have now like was was really formed at that record, which Max came back and then uh, our old singer left. Sylvain and Mauricio started on vocals and then we Stefan joined the band on bass. So that was like the actual lineup. It was kind of starting from scratch, from at that record because we were like a, a like. It was first time for Mauricio to sing, and then uh, we were kind of we we kind of overdid the technical thing on the uh, record before, and we wanted to go somewhere completely different for the for that record, and uh, so that then that's the the thing with this whole world came, came came out a certain way, and we almost had like a punk attitude on that record. We just we played, a, we went back to the studio, did it live again, like played everybody together to get like the the a certain feel and. Uh, that was more what the what we were aiming for for that record. Huge. <laughs> um, uh, stigmata of the Immaculate, the Prophecy, um, two thousand. What's your view there? Let's let's keep going. I mean that that record for me, uh, the Prophecy is when because uh, you know Cataclysm back then uh, was still kind of a hobby for us, and we all like uh, we were all working different jobs and. Uh, and different things, and we would get together and do cataclysm uh, as a as a hobby. And once in a while, when all of us could take vacation, we would like just sneak in a tour in the tour and the schedule and stuff like that. But at the prophecy is when uh, we we all had a, a meeting one day, and we said like we either like do this as a hobby, or we like go full fledged into it and start touring more and start to try to make this as a career and I was fine with the hobby thing to be honest uh, I just like I wanted to to know where we stand and we like we all did this meeting and we all decided okay you know what let's just let, let's all quit our jobs and, and do this for for real like try that so we, we really like uh, worked hard on the album the recording the production and everything and and the touring like, that's the first album we, we went on the road almost eight months out of the out of the year wow. for that record and pushed it as much as we could and then uh, that was kind of like the the more serious start of the band uh, as we know today oh man that's awesome I mean that almost says the prophecy of how you guys what we started the show with telling you that you left in last August and now you're just home and uh, you know, you're like slightly tired but not really uh, <laughs> fucking 
<laughs> that's why we see you in the airport so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. And, like, and a lot of people are asking us, like, because they, they're asking us, how did you do it all these years? And, like, all, uh, like, how come you guys are doing so well and all that stuff? And, and, and my reply is always, like, it's, it's just we live it and then we live it, breed it. It's, it's hard work. Like, we, we work really super hard. We're always on the road and we try to do... Uh, what we feel is the right thing, according to us, like the you do show showcase what we put, showcase our music and play as much as we can, and with any type of bands like yeah, that, that, that are willing to take us out, or sometimes like we're now this last run was really cool because we're most of the run was headlining, so we we had lined it pretty much everywhere, and we chose like the bands that came on the road with us, and now that was also a fun. Thing to be able to align because not so much because I, I, I care about being the last band but just because we're able to bring our show and play as long as we want with like our own props and lights and all that stuff and makes it makes everything better oh yeah there's nothing like headlining <laughs> yeah wow what a great answer for that I uh Huge, huge, huge. Epic, The Poetry of War, 2001 now. What's going on here? Uh, no, I think it's a, pro- a progression from uh, from The Prophecy. We we're still into that mind frame. Uh, I think Epic is an album that sounds a little more uh, on the melodic side and more uh, on the darker ambience and, and uh, stuff like that. We... Uh, we always tend to do that. Like we'll do albums sometimes a little more aggressive than others, and sometimes we go a little more melodic. We don't really ask ourselves why, or we just write pretty much spontaneously, and we uh, whatever comes out comes out. But it's two things we like. I mean, I, as a guitar player, I always love melody. Like uh, from being a big, a big Iron Maiden fan, and and so on. And at the same time, I like extreme music, and I like uh, really brutal riffing and and down tune guitars and all this stuff and I try to mix it all together and they, that album to be epic came out a little more melodic than, than the previous one but to, it's a good uh, it's a good record and there's a few good songs on there that I'd like to play live like it, it's getting harder and harder to to pick songs from older records because we have so much to play <laughs> and yeah. so little time I find but that's uh, epic that's one of the records I'd like to to play some more music from Awesome. Hey, when you said down tune uh, guitars, how low do you tune uh, that six string? I don't know if you guys use seven strings. I can't tell. No, we are, we are on six string and we're tuned to B. So uh, that's the the. But it's straight tuning. I I don't like uh, drop. It's not drop B. It's like straight B. Like it's B standard. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. That's a cool cool thing to throw in there shadows and dust man 2002 it's said that uh you guys really feel this is your most successful album what's what's up with this album i'd say maybe not the most successful but to me is uh, probably like i'd say it's my favorite album that we wrote this this one was like uh, it feels like i like every song and then like everything is just well placed and perfect of, of, of this album. Uh, it's one of those albums where like all the stars were aligned and we just wrote everything perfect. <laughs> uh, I mean, according to what I like, my but I, I just I, I really like the energy on this record, and, and I think somehow it was the record that kind of made us more important in, in that metal scene. It's like where things really started to happen for us, like in 2002 and. Uh, yeah, I, I did. It's one of, one of my favorites that we did for sure. Great, great. And we got uh, four left here. Sorry to drag you through this. I know you might be weary. You're supposed to be relaxing now. You're off to her, and here you are at work. So, <laughs> um, how about Serenity and Fire, two thousand four? Mm, Serenity and Fire is uh, the follow up to uh, to Shadows and Dust, uh, and also uh, with the, other, the new drummer Martin that came and filled in for that record, and so this also gave gave it gave that album a different tone. So again, a new musician, so a, a new uh, way of thought in, in the songs. But I think the album came out pretty uh, aggressive. Um, we 
I, I felt we had like a bit of pressure writing after the Shadows and Dust because like the album came out so good that the next one we were, we tried to outdo ourselves. But uh, for me, I really <laughs> liked it. But there's a few songs that I would probably change right now if I could like uh, go back to it. There's a few things that I feel are uh, some songs that are a little too simple or too. Uh, uh, to in a certain way, or I wish I could redo it with Max on the drums, basically, because I think he would have brought up a lot of cool ideas for those songs. But, uh, at least it's a good album still. I I, uh, I like it, but it uh, it's one I would have liked to have Max on, on the drums. Maybe maybe that would be something interesting to do as a you know a live. Yeah, we we play a few songs for uh, for from Seventeen Fire with Max, and he he already brought a lot of his his input and ideas into the songs when we played them live. So that makes it be, like more fun. And I wish like sometimes we could redo it, like but <laughs> it passes the pass. <laughs> no, no, you can redo it. There's nothing yeah. holding that back. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe like uh, put it like pull up put out a live version or something like professionally. Just do it again for fun, like Serenity of Fire with with Max. In the arms of devastation. Now this one definitely this might be where we may have bumped into you. I played uh, the House of Blues with Trouble. Um Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember that. And uh, it was so fun yeah, watching Chicago you guys. Yeah, it, it was also the night we were testing a new our new song guy Adam. He he flew in for the show and we're, he's been working with us since that night. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Describe uh, in the arms of devastation. Then uh. I, in, the, in the arms uh, was uh, once again the return of Max. So for me, it was a really uh, a fun album to write because he. He was back in the band with like a, with a big drive up energy, and we, we guess we pushed each other to write some really cool stuff. And uh, I, I really like the Indie Arms record. Uh, it's like uh, I, I said earlier, my uh, my favorite Cataclysm albums probably Shadows and Dust, but my favorite song is probably off of Indie Arms, the opening track. That's probably the first, the uh, the best Cataclysm song that we've written for. Uh, that I uh, lo- still love to play live, and I like to listen to, uh, like Angels Weeping in the Dark. I, I I love that track. Prevail. Now we're into 2008. It's like you guys do it every two years. You have a like a almost mathematical concept here. Prevail. Yeah, Prevail was a cool record too because we uh, coming off of In the Arms, like we we were like uh, on a on a high and. Uh, we, we went into the studio, we tried something a little different, so we used an American producer, because we usually, we we record the albums ourselves, but lately, the last uh, three or four records, we've been using different mixers uh, to try to change the, the the sound or the recipe a little bit. So uh, the album before in the arms, we used a producer from Denmark, Tim Madsen, and then the Priva record, we went to... Uh, Jason Sukoff in Florida, and we tried an American producer for a different sound and different tone. So that came up pretty cool. Uh, we it was it's a, it's a cool record. We had a good touring cycle also for it. Did a, a few cool tours in the states, like the Summer Slaughter tour, and a few things that were that was really uh, really nice. And it came uh, it came came up pretty good. We're uh, we're pretty happy with this record. Uh, and that's led to the last one, Evans Venom. And yeah, and then this is like we're uh, still in the in the touring cycle for this one. And that that album, I really like the drive and the energy uh, of that album. I'm really proud of it. The, the the production too. I really that's one of my favorite like uh, recordings. I think we've done like on the sound, and uh, I like those songs a lot. And what I like now, I find like a, a year later that's been the album has been released. Uh, the songs works really well live. They're really fun to play, um, and that's always a, a good a good thing to see. All the songs adapt from the studio to the live uh, aspect, and there a lot of them are turning great. And so now, for since since the last year, we've been playing maybe half the record live. So we're I'm looking forward to trying new songs from that record on the next few tours. We're gonna switch the set list around a little bit and try different things, but. Uh, so far, I'm really, uh, really proud of that record. 
Great, great expose on all these albums. Uh, let's go with one last thing. And uh, we're on internet radio. We like to ask all our uh, people that we talk to, you know, what would they like to say to the entire world right now? Mm, I mean, uh, for me as a, as a musician and being part of this band, I'd like to thank all our fans that always supported us all those years and the new one that that jumped on board and the ones that have been there since the beginning uh, I don't think we could have been doing this for all those years without you guys because it's been like a, a crazy ride and I think everyone shows up like year after year album after album and still like come and come and see us live and it's been it's been really cool and without without you I don't think any of this would have been possible <laughs> 